Cyber Threat Intelligence. Welcome to my weekly roundup of In the News for Cybersecurity. This is my third upload now for where we discuss the most important topics in cybersecurity. In this week's video, we'll be going through Ivanti, who recently released an urgent patch for a zero day vulnerability. We'll then be looking into Fraud GPT, which is a new AI tool that is being used for sophisticated attacks. I actually covered Worm GPT, which is a similar tool being used by malicious actors in a previous video. So if you're interested in that afterwards, do check that out. The final topic will then go on to discuss the decline of ransomware payments and what new trends we're seeing from these malicious actor groups. All very interesting topics and everything is timestamped down below so feel free to skip ahead to a specific topic if that's all you're here for but I do recommend staying for the whole video. If you enjoy these please do leave a like it massively helps it out and then tells me to keep creating this type of content. So going to our first topic Ivanti which has been in the news a lot over the last week. So previously labelled mobile iron core Avanti have issued a warning about a vulnerability known as Entractas CVE 2023-35078. This vulnerability has been labelled as critical and it's been given a maximum severity rating of 10 on the CVSS scale. And in summary, it essentially allows unauthorised access to restricted functionality and resources of the application without proper authentication. And if the vulnerability is exploited, an unauthorized and remote attacker can potentially access a user's personally identifiable information and then make limited changes to the server. So attacks have been observed targeting government security and service organizations, but by unknown threat actors at the moment. And although Avanti is aware of active exploitation, it's been against a limited number of customers and specific details of the attacks remain undisclosed at this moment in time. So, can you guess what they're asking all their customers to do? Yes, patch. Patching has been issued and is available if you're a user. So, update your EPMM to these versions immediately and secure your network against these threats which are under active attacks. And since writing this, a new vulnerability which has been tracked as CVE 2023-35081 has come out and been given a CVSS score of 7.8. So a lot has been going on for Avanti and I recommend if you are a customer, patch those and make sure you're aware of what's going on just so you can look at your environment and see if there is anything suspicious. As I mentioned, there is no indicates of compromise at the moment. However, these may come out. So it's good to just get yourself familiar and see what's normal for yourselves. That covers Avanti. Let's now move on to the next topic, which is fraud GPT. So as I mentioned before, similar to Worm GPT, which we talked about in a previous video, this generative AI tool is specifically designed for offensive purposes. And in a video demo that's been circulating online, Fraud GPT quickly shows how it pumps out an effective SMS phishing message pretending to be a bank. And also one of the things that I found most shocking was that it could also be programmed to supply Intel on the best websites to commit credit card fraud against. Now, the tool itself has been going since around July 22nd, 2023, and it's available on the dark web for a subscription cost of $200 a month, which is a lot more than Worm GPT. Or you can get longer plans for $1,000 for six months. That's not me promoting it. And since I did my video on Worm GPT, I did get quite a lot of messages asking how it can be downloaded. Those are not questions I will be answering or pointing you in the direction of for obvious reasons. This is purely for information purposes. And the act behind this tool, who goes by the name Canadian Kingpin, claims it can be used to write malicious code, create undetectable malware and find leaks and vulnerabilities. They've also boasted online over 3000 confirmed sales and reviews, which makes this a very significant and active threat that you definitely need to be aware of. The advice at the moment is to carry on being proactive and just making sure you have best practice security in place. So for example, adopt a defense in depth strategy and make sure you're using security telemetry for fast analytics and be able to detect threats before they escalate into something more dangerous like ransomware or data exfil. More tools like this will continually come out and I'm sure I will cover more in the future. So make sure you are subscribed and you're keeping aware 
of what's happening in this space. Now, moving on to our final topic, which is ransomware. So we've recently been seeing ransomware gangs adapt their extortion tactics due to declining ransomware payments. And just like any business, if you're seeing a decrease in sales, you'll change and adapt your approach to make that difference. So just as a recent example of this, we've seen Klopp ransomware gang utilizing new tactics as part of their extortion schemes where they've been creating clear websites to leak data stolen during the move it transfer attacks. And so what does that mean and why is it dangerous? Well, by using these clear websites, it makes it easier to access the stolen data and can allow search engines like Google to index the data and make it more available. That then applies further pressure on the victims to have it removed, as it could now lead to an increase of traffic of people visiting, visiting that exfiltrated data, which then has a cause and knock-on effect to maybe increased reputational damage for that company. And now, just to look at a real-life example of something that's been in the news recently about this, we'll be looking at PwC. So Klopp did claim to exfiltrate data from PwC and has divided the files that they stole from them into 11 batches and listed them all onto the dark web. And from that, they have taken four of these and listed them on the clear web. Of course, their actual reasons are unknown, but the assumptions are that because they've not received a payment or the kind of communication they were expecting, they're trying to apply further pressure on PwC by pasting these on the clear web. So does this mean we're now seeing a change in overall tactics by ransomware gangs to apply pressure to their victims? Maybe. All we can do is analyse their behaviour and try to predict the future from that. So it's good to stay aware and make sure you keep an eye on their tactics just so you know exactly what's going on. That then covers my top three topics for this week and if you enjoyed please subscribe and do click the link in the description or the comment section where you can join my discord community where we have a dedicated cybersecurity channel to discuss all things cybersecurity where you're free to ask any question that you like. Please do leave a like it massively helps out the video and tells me that you're enjoying this content so I can continue making it.